Hello, hello, hello. It has been a lovely few months since I finished my third year and I've just been enjoying my life. I actually went to Korea in Japan for five weeks with my colleague slash BFF, Alexa. It was so much fun. And because we're both fashion students and dancers, we really got to see things that were important to us that weren't on a typical tour, I guess you could say. That was one of the most rejuvenating trips I've ever done in my life. It was really inspiring, very humbling, such a different way of living, and it's very refreshing. Something that stood out to me in Japan is when you went to their fashion hubs such as Harajuku or Shibuya, and within these hubs they have all different types of you know, 10-story department stores. Every single brand there, I'd say maybe 90%, when you ask them about it, they say, oh, it's a Japanese designer, Japanese designer, Japanese designer, and then this is their store, like this is it. And for me, that was just so shocking because you look at Toronto and all of our boutiques, our stores are run by corporate giants because rent is so expensive here. Japan, real recognizes real. They are supporting their local talent, which I have just such a deep respect for because I think Toronto, I think Canada could follow suit and support Canadian businesses way better, especially in fashion. Like there's so many great labels out there that people don't know about because the government doesn't give them the space or give them opportunities to do so. So we first went to Korea. And Korea, we stayed in three different parts of Seoul because it's a huge city and each little district within Seoul is diverse itself. In general, Korea is very brand focused. Um, there's a huge industry for knockoffs versus Japan. There was absolutely no knockoffs, no counterfeiting of stuff to try and make you look rich. It was just Japanese brands versus Toronto. I feel like it's a good mix, except we have almost no Toronto brands that are at a mass produced level that I could see someone walking down and like, oh, you're wearing Toronto designer, you're wearing a Toronto designer, you're wearing Toronto designer. Like I barely see anyone wearing Toronto designs here is who's the average Joe, right? It's really disappointing versus in Japan, they're just everywhere because Japan is awesome. It's designed, produced in Japan, sold in Japan. As for general street fashion, I'm sure there's like a million videos about these. So I'm just going to be brief about it as a fashion design student point of view versus just a, you know, your basic bitch who wants to find herself teaching in Korea. Shade. It was really interesting. In Korea, I could describe three to four archetypes of what Korean women typically wear. Because all the stores in Korea, they kind of sell the same thing. Like I saw the same shirt across these three different shirts of Seoul sold by three different retailers and it's all the same type of style, you know, right now hot in Korea is, you know, the off the shoulder tops with the flounce around the bust level, also really in like peasant shirts, a um, lot of athletic use of athletic mesh. Um, there's also a lot of like athletic inspiration in terms of like the banding to look like a jersey, but it was made more feminine, you know, kind of almost looking like cheerleader costumes. I How many girls I saw wearing this, but a white shirt with a floral spaghetti strap on top. Honestly, every other girl was wearing that bit. And of course, the shirts underneath are to protect their skin from the sun, because both Japan and Korea are very conscious of um, sun exposure, which is awesome, because the sun is a ball of fire. Yeah, there was very few moments I felt I looked at women's fashion and thought, wow, that's like a look, that's an individual style. Like, very fitting into the mold of accepted beauty, because South Korea is so rigid. They only, they have such a small amount of immigrants that it's a very, very homogenous population, so they're for very strict ideas of beauty and fashion. As for Japan, though, Japan is very focused on the individual versus Korea's the collective. Again, this is not a bad thing. I'm just saying that Korea has a very collective way of thinking and dressing in order, you know, to have a sense of belonging to different groups versus Japan is really about independency, self-sufficiency, and like differentiation. Again, a lot of local designers, therefore a lot of different designs. So every single person has kind of rocking their own thing in my opinion. And also I felt that they just felt more natural. It just felt a lot like Toronto in the sense that just people living their daily lives. For South Korea, people were absolutely beautiful all the time there. Everyone has a full face of makeup, no matter where you're going. Oh, fun fact, in Korea, a lot of the time you're not allowed to try on the clothes. So because of how much makeup people typically wear, there's a face mask. If they let you try it on, they have to wear over your face while you put the garment on so that you don't get all your, you know, when you were beating your face, that you didn't take it off on their clothing. Something we also did that was really interesting is we went to 
Funka Gakuen, which is the fashion college of Tokyo, and it is top three in the world. Fun fact, Ryerson is 37 out of 50. And Bunka, we got to see the fashion show of the graduate class. Alex and I actually went back and saw it twice because it was that amazing. Each designer, their designs were done justice because they got full control over the production, the music, the lighting, the blocking for the models, how they walked on stage, everything. So every single collection, like it was so clear what they wanted you to feel, who would be wearing it, where they'd be wearing it, who this chick was hanging with, who her enemies were. Like our shows are not even in, not even close to the caliber of Bunka. And also while we were at Bunka, we checked out like their labs and their fashion stores and their cafeteria. Like we just invaded Alexa and I because we were curious. Their creativity and the process they go through to reach the end design is light years beyond what we do. And it's so much more about the process than the end goal. And I feel Ryerson really focuses on end goal and technique versus we barely spend not enough time at all on the design process. Usually it's within the first week they say, okay, come through with a hundred sketches of your um, three-piece suit. And so you come in and then you say, okay, choose final three and then narrow it down to one and then we start designing next week. So the actual ideation only lasts about two weeks and then the rest of the semester for 10 weeks, you're drafting it, constructing it, muslin, constructing it, final garment. So minimal time is spent on the design versus the reverse overseas in Tokyo. And I know some friends at Amphi in Amsterdam, same thing. It's total reverse that most of it is spent on exploring your idea, which I think is way more valuable. Because to be honest, learning technical skill that will get me good jobs in production, the head logician here to get shit done. But if you want to really push yourself as a creator, as an artist, like your process should be spent on learning how to refine your work and draw inspiration. We don't spend any time, like nearly enough time on the ideation process that I think we should. Um, so that's a real pity because I know that most people come into the idea that I want to be designers and some I strongly believe they will be, but it always has to be on your own time. Like Ryerson doesn't nurture the creativity that I thought I would have at this point in university. Like, I think I am a very creative person. However, Ryerson has not pushed me that. I've done it myself in my own personal projects. And who knows, maybe I will go study at Bunka. Just kidding, you have to be fluent in Japanese. But, um, girl can try. Thank you very much for tuning in to this update. I'm gonna do another update separate. And yeah, I'll see you soon, guys. Bye!